Ventura Martinez feels like he has a target on his back. On the city's toughest streets, where vengeance rules, drug dealers warn him that he's a dead man. At home, Martinez peeks out windows and listens for sounds of a hitman lurking in darkness, ready to pull the trigger. When outside, he darts his head from shoulder to shoulder, wondering if this is the day he'll get whacked. Going to work in the morning is hell, Martinez sobbed. Coming home from work is hell. I'm thinking that somebody is going to pop me from behind. Years ago, when you went out on a story, people were so used to seeing reporters out on the street, they'd recognize you by name, or they'd say, oh yeah, I read that story three days ago, or whatever, and that you'd have more of a day in, day out connection. And now that people are more removed, reporters are not on the street as much, you don't have that as much anymore. So that was the beauty, I thought, of, or in rewarding in this series, is that we could actually go out there and and do it and make that connection with people. I think nowadays, okay. like reporters, because of computers and computer assisted reporting and Excel sheets and getting data dumps, like getting data from the court and then processing the numbers, like journalism has gotten away from shoe leather, the basics of journalism, which is basically just getting out with this and knocking on doors. People often ask us, like, for this story, when we knocked on hundreds of doors in, you know, bad neighborhoods, like if we were scared, and we weren't scared at all. Like that doesn't scare me. It's a high when you're, do, yeah. you know, you're walking up and down streets and knocking on like boarded doors. I like to be in the worst neighborhood in the city or wherever it is to be in the thick of it. You just never know what's going to happen. You never know mm -hmm. what's going to happen at work. I never want to have a job where I come in, you know, I punch the clock. I wait, I watch the clock all day long. Is it five yet? Is it five yet? Is it five yet? No, like that, I couldn't do that. I want it. I want to be surprised. I want to come to work every day and I want to be surprised. I mean, we get to go places and see things and talk to people. No one else does. I mean, nobody else outside this profession goes into houses we go into or talks to people we get to talk to. What other job can you have where you get to see the world um, and you're right there? You're like on the front lines. Uh, I guess one of, the, one of the pleasures of the job in a perverse way is uh, putting out a damn good newspaper in the face of enormous challenges and, and a, a badly shrunken staff and, you know, putting out a paper that was good enough to win the Pulitzer Prize for investigative journalism. My name is Gar Joseph and I am city editor of the Philadelphia Daily News. There's always been a kind of uh, us against the world uh, ethos here at the Daily News because, you know, we were always overshadowed by our larger sister who always you know, got uh, the, the lion's share of the resources, yet, uh, you know, we've been able to um, break really good stories and, and do really excellent journalism uh, with far, far fewer resources. That's why I have a sign in my window, I have a sign in my window that's been my motto, easy sucks, uh, because it hasn't been easy. So, yeah, I think, I think Ask Wendy, uh, uh, the, the way they did their investigative, uh, their, their series that won the Pulitzer, there was nothing easy about that at all at any time. Initially, the first story we did on taint, the Tainted Justice series it was basically about a drug dealer and a cop who were making up, fabricating evidence to bust drug dealers, people who were really drug dealers. They just weren't doing it the fair way. It was deep corruption on the part of a narcotic squad in Philadelphia that had done everything from lying on search warrants to looting bodegas to one cop sexually assaulting women during raids. It was amazing to us that this was a story that had never been told that we just stumbled upon almost by accident. Like how could this be happening in the city and nobody knows about it? And how could it be going on for so long? And then it's not until we knock on some bodega's door and say we want you to tell us what happened during the raid. And then all of a sudden like they're telling us the story, all the same story in all four corners of the city. It was just one of those rare wow moments where you're on a story and you're just you're just taken aback by it. We are a 90% newsstand newspaper. We, we don't have home delivery. Only 10% of our, our readers have home delivery. We cannot survive by throwing a gray lump on your driveway. We have to put something out there on the front page every day that's going to cause somebody to get up out of their chair, walk down the block to the Wawa, buy the paper or buy it from an honor box, uh, and read it. 
uh, pay their dollar and read it. To think that that is a solid business plan when you also give that content away for free on the internet is not rational thinking. Obviously, digital is the way of the future, so there's a solid commitment to the new media. Uh, the, the problem is the new media provides less than 10% of the revenues for this company. So while they are getting all of this great content, the amount of revenue that they generate cannot possibly support the content gathering operation that we have here. We have an obligation to our community to produce the kind of information that makes them informed citizens so that when they go to, into the election booth and, and decide on a candidate, uh, if they've taken the time to read our newspaper, they'll know a little bit about the issues. That's important information and they're not going to get it from you know, some guy in his pajamas that's blogging, they're, they're going to get it from, uh, unless the guy in the pajamas who's, who's blogging is actually going out and doing solid street reporting. Um, not that I have anything against pajamas, but, but that's, you know, that, that's how you become a citizen in a democracy is, is uh, by getting that kind of information, and newspapers still provide it the best. I think we kind of see the job as a calling, as a mission, and we think that it should have some sort of public outrage factor, it should be a public service. Um, or that you're righting the wrongs, like the bodega owners, they hadn't complained to anyone. Um, they hadn't gone to, you know, police department internal affairs to complain. They thought this was just the, the way you do things in Philadelphia. And if you're an immigrant who doesn't speak English, then this just happens to you. And yeah, so, like a street tax or yeah, something. Yeah, it's a street tax that they pay for the privilege of doing business in Philadelphia. It really, like, made us feel good that we could tell their story when they hadn't told it to anyone else. And it would still be continuing today. It's a reward for us to know that that it's not happening right now. Yeah, that's at, I think that's at the core of investigative work. You know, feeling like you want to right a wrong, feeling like you want to make a change, feeling like you want to make an impact, like, and to have a little bit of outrage there, like this is wrong, we should fix it. To sum up journalism succinctly, it's like life is a circus and we as journalists are sitting here eating popcorn and watching it all. And there's always an element of surprise. Um, there's always the high wire act the lion, something scary, the clowns, something funny. And, um, and you get to sit there and eat the popcorn and then go back and tell everybody what you just saw. It's nice.